Yeah, yeah. Welcome, Mike. We've been deep into the rookie streets. Most of the videos that I make from here until the NFL draft will be pretty rookie focused. However, we need to show, I mean, the only reason people in fantasy care about the rookies at this point in the year is because they're in dynasty leagues. So it's important that we nurture and we make sure that the dynasty streets are also shown love. There are vets out here that impact your dynasty teams far more than these rookies. So today, I want to dive into some contract situations and talk about each position and the biggest names that are unrestricted free agents going into this free agency period. On a technical level, the free agency period starts on March 15th at 4 p.m., Eastern time. So this won't actually matter for another month or so, but some of y'all need to get ahead of the game. Some of y'all need to think of the players that are going to be unlocked based on these dudes being free agents. Or if you think these guys are going to be unlocked because now they're moving to a situation where they're going to get more opportunities, etc. So we're going to go position by position and break down the biggest players at each position and just a quick little tidbit or impact that it might have around the teams that they're currently on or teams that they could possibly land on. And I'm thinking maybe next week, next Friday, I'm thinking I might just do like Fridays are reserved for specific dynasty focus videos. So I'm thinking maybe next week we do the inverse where we're talking about dudes that are on contract year. So this is their last year be before they become an unrestricted free agent. Let me know what y'all want to see for next week or just dynasty content in general as it relates to moving forward. So let's jump in. Let's tuck our shirts in. Honestly, this is, I got, this crew neck is too thick. It ain't going to get tucked in. Oh, fuck it. Fuck it. We do it. We do it live. <laughs> So starting at the top, the quarterback position, there are basically two dudes that I think are really like impactful players as it relates to the iconic level of this free agency class, and it is Lamar Jackson and Daniel Jones. So Lamar Jackson and the Ravens are clearly extremely far apart in their contract talks and the extension talks, apparently $100 million type beat apart. Lamar Jackson is his own agent, which I respect, but I imagine there are things that he is foregoing that he probably doesn't even know that he's foregoing based on the fact whatever I'm not here to talk about that but Lamar Jackson there's a very realistic chance that he does not end up in Baltimore next year and that would be a massive shakeup in the NFL landscape because you put him on a, a large number of teams he's been linked with a, a ton of teams we'll throw some tweets up on the screen my Atlanta Falcons maybe that would be beautiful oh my goodness Lamar Jackson in Atlanta hereby declaring Atlanta Watlanta we're sent up to HQ down there in Georgia. I wanted Deshaun Watson last year. Give me fucking Lamar Jackson. It starts now. Super Bowl runs through Atlanta. Super Bowl runs through Jack's Lana. Let's go. So Lamar Jackson's the first one. Very realistic chance that he does not play in Baltimore next year. Obviously, that would be a killer for, ah, depending on who they have at quarterback. If they have, you know, a top 20 player, a guy who could just throw the ball, a guy who's uh, accurate enough, I don't think it really hurts Mark Andrews. I don't think it hurts the other pass catchers there necessarily because this is already a very low volume passing offense with a high propensity to run the ball. So things are going to be very different in Baltimore, obviously, next year if he lands elsewhere. So I, I don't want to spend a ton of time in this video like predicting where guys are going to land because I feel like it's kind of just a waste of time. I just more so want to make you present minded of the dudes that could be on the move. Now, Daniel Jones, could there have been a better fucking time for him to blast off? They now have to pay him probably upwards of 33, 35, 37 million dollars because this year he went from a turnover machine to the opposite of that. He had the single lowest uh, interception rate, I believe, like interception pass rate this year in the NFL, which was very unlike Danny Dimes, okay? He went from Danny Nichols to Danny Dimes real quick. He multiplied the money that he's now going to have his bank account. I think, I mean, I, I'm, I'm very, very certain that he's going to end up back as a New York Giants franchise quarterback for the foreseeable future. So it doesn't really change much for me. They do have a lot of players that they need to resign on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, some other notable quarterbacks that are unrestricted free agents that will likely be in new situations. Baker Mayfield, Jimmy G, Taylor Heineke, Gardner Minshew. Baker and Jimmy G could end up as like back tier starting quarterbacks for teams. Heineke, Minshew, and a, a whole other list of players will probably end up being career backups for the rest of their 
uh, career. And all of these contracts, everything that I'm talking about, you guys can go find yourselves. You don't even need to watch the rest of this fucking video, but go to spotrack.com, S-P-O-T-R-A-C.com. Uh, I'll link that down below. It's all free information that you can go mess around with. And there's a lot of different like flexible options to see by position, by contract, by year, all that good stuff. I'm just here to yell at you and hopefully grab a like down by the comment section. So that's the quarterback position. Uh, a couple guys that are notable, obviously, but no one massive at this point outside of those two. The running back position is fruitful. So we have a pretty good class coming in. Uh, I don't think it's to the level outside of like Bijan Robinson. Behind Bijan, there's a toss up of guys that are good players, good running backs, but not a ton of like upper tier standout guys. They're going to come right in and take jobs of a lot of these veterans that are going to be on the move. The very first guy that we need to talk about, I kind of broke these down into tiers the way I'm seeing them right now. Tier one has three dudes that are unrestricted free agents. That will be really interesting to see where they land. First off, with Daniel Jones, you got his backfield mate and his homie, Saquon Barkley. These two are very close friends. I think Saquon wants to stay in New York. Obviously had a, a massive bounce back year this year. Still one of the top running backs in the world on planet Earth. And honestly, if you went to different planets, he'd probably still be one of the better running backs of all the alien species. So Saquon's going to command a big contract. He's an unrestricted free agent right now. If I had to guess, he lands back in New York. I don't really know how New York fans feel about that because I guess first things first is uh, owner's money is not real, right? Like, I don't know why people get so, ah, we gave him $30 million. Like, it fucking doesn't matter. It's fuck. It's fake money. It's fake money. I know it, like, stops you from maybe signing other players, but, like, also not the truth. Like, if you have a, a DN that you want to sign in free agency, like, you're going to make that shit happen regardless of whether or not you're giving the running back the bag. Outside of the Dallas Cowboys, you're fucking morons with the Z contract. But Saquon, I think, ends up back in New York. Josh Jacobs, he's also in tier one, right? Ended up Top five fantasy running back year um, against all odds. It did not sound good to start the year. It seemed like he was going to be a committee. It seemed like he was going to not really play much on passing downs. Couldn't be further from the truth. They did not pick up his fifth year option. And now he's likely going to be out of there. They could franchise tag him, but feels like they're in rebuild mode possibly we'll have to see what happens with like Aaron Rodgers if he goes to LV and links up with Devontae Adams but Josh Jacobs is an unrestricted free agent who will probably command a sizable contract whether that's in Miami or whether you know wherever it may be coming off a career year so re led the NFL in rushing uh he will be a coveted asset in this free agent class we'll see if people have learned from he's kind of in that like Zeke mold where they gave him this crazy extension even when he was still in his prime knowing that you know within a year two years three years he's going to be on the latter stage of his career so we'll see if teams learn from the whole Zeke situation where I don't see a huge difference from Josh Jacobs and Zeke when they were in their prime Zeke I I think better, but regardless, it's a moot point to argue. I think he will end up elsewhere outside of Las Vegas and become a workhorse for wherever he is. I will say I'd be a little bit hesitant to think he's going to be a pass catcher at the same level that he was this year. But yeah, Josh Jacobs, 65 targets this year, 53 catches, 400 receiving yards. That is basically the second year in a row with near identical uh, receiving totals the year before that 64 targets 54 catches 65 targets 60 uh, 53 catches so very involved in the passing game for a running back especially for a running back who just got 340 fucking carries 1653 yards on the ground 4.9 yards per carry 12 touchdowns so one of the best running backs in the nfl this year now hits the free agent market because they did not pick up his fifth year option tony pollard is the third guy on this list now tony pollard was a revelation for the cowboys this year. If they didn't have Tony Pollard, I don't know what this team would have done on offense because Zeke looked so slow. It's so crazy looking back on what Zeke was four years ago. When you start to see highlights of, of Zeke like ripping off big time runs, you're like, man, I don't even, I barely remember Zeke being not fat. If you go look at player profiler right now, if before you did that, you guess who ran a, a faster 40 yard dash time? I think any human with a brain, anyone that watched football this year would say Tony Pollard. At this point, that would obviously be the case. But when Zeke came in the league at 225 pounds, he ran a 4.47. That's like an elite speed score. Tony Pollard at 210 pounds ran a 4.52. So Zeke was a half a tenth of a second faster in the 40-yard dash and 15 pounds heavier. Zeke was explosive. Zeke was a monster when he came in the league. One of the better running back prospects in you know, in the previous decade when he came in the league. Remember how early he, he drafted the top five pick? People were not fucking around with Zeke, but people will not be fucking around with Tony Pollard right now. 25 years old, coming off a career year, looked every bit as advertised on fantasy Twitter this offseason about people saying, oh, Pollard's better than Zeke at this point. And I was hesitant to buy into it, but man, if you watch this year, Tony Pollard was 
awesome. And he will likely land in a spot that I don't know if they'll give him workhorse usage immediately, but he's going to get a nice bag. He won't be the highest paid running back. He will he will land a nice deal, a multi-year deal somewhere, three, four years, you know, 10 million dollars a year 11 12 probably in that range and be a dude who gets 15 16 17 touches per game a few via pass a bunch via the ground I don't know if he'll ever get to like 20 carries a game I'd love to see it but he is you know for all intents and purposes on the smaller ish side 210 pounds but he is a, a bona fide playmaker so wherever Tony Pollard lands there's a really good chance he is drafted as like a top two round pick next year within the first 24 picks and I don't have a good argument against it so those are my tier one guys and if we drop down to tier two Josh Jacobs his rookie class there were three running backs that were like highly touted right they were the top three running backs and then everybody else was in their own tier so those other guys are also unrestricted free agents in the same class this offseason David Montgomery and it's Miles Sanders. Dave Montgomery's been a, I don't know how what you'd call him. I don't, I, he's been an extremely serviceable, above average back that can do, play on all three downs. He can catch the ball, he can run the ball, he can play on the goal line, he can do it all. I just don't think he does anything at like an extremely high level. I don't know how coveted of a signing he will be. I do think wherever he goes, like an NFL team is going to get an awesome 1A in a committee back, given what we've seen from David Montgomery at this point. Does Chicago look to bring him back? I don't know. They, they'd they do better letting Khalil Herbert be the guy there because he's 90% on the ground with David Montgomery is and just grabbing a pass catching back in this class if they want to have a supplement to Khalil Herbert because Khalil Herbert is the truth i fucking love that dude and if you can go get him now before free agency hits all in on that montgomery will go somewhere and likely be like a high-end rb3 i don't think the ceiling is going to be there anymore that they had in chicago where they were giving him 25 touches a game at some points i think they'd be better off using that money for all the other fucking holes that they have in that offense to equip justin fields with maybe a wide receiver maybe you know we've seen a lot of wide receivers get like three for 35 type free agency contracts whereas that's probably what david montgomery would try to command at this point doubtful that he'll get it but uh david montgomery and miles sanders so miles sanders has been uh, his rookie contract's hard to explain had some good years had some bad years been inconsistent had trouble staying on the field super athletic coming in now he doesn't pa catch any fucking passes whatsoever so i could see him having like a resurgence where he takes over a workhorse role in another situation i could see philly re signing him to a modest deal I could see him landing somewhere and also taking over the 1a role and Philly grabbing one of these backs in free agency I, I would be surprised if, if Miles Sanders doesn't leave they don't make a big splash one way or another whether it's like Bijan Robinson or one of these top rated running backs in the class or signing one of these top free agents so I think we'll see a switch up in the Philly backfield uh this offseason but Miles Sanders is a free agent I'd like to see him land somewhere where he gets the opportunity because I think he is an explosive back. I think he is a good runner. I think he's probably better as a pass catcher than what he's now being labeled at because of the last like six to eight weeks has been fucking crazy. Um, just his lack of involvement there based on his athleticism. But Miles Sanders, free agent, and that wraps up tier two. Tier three are the honorable mentions are guys that I think are good players, but I don't I don't know how the NFL will see them in terms of like free agency signings. I think every single one of these guys could be a high end one B in a committee. And those are Kareem Hunt, Jamal Williams, Devin Singletary, Damian Harris, maybe James Robinson, maybe Deonta Foreman. Uh the latter two, I don't know what Foreman has left in the tank. James Robinson also I'm not sure post Achilles he's been terrible outside of the first like three games of last season so but with those first four guys like Kareem Hunt has obviously had a long efficient career this was a, a not a good year for him so I don't know how much he can really command in free agency but he's a good piece obviously for a backfield elsewhere Jamal Williams I don't know how you can't resign him as a Detroit Lion like he is like the heart and soul of that team at this point so I'd be surprised if he lands elsewhere he's just such a locker room guy and of course he's a fucking on-field playmaker too leading the NFL in rushing touchdowns this year so you're getting a two-piece there. If Jamal Williams leaves, DeAndre Swift would be unlocked for more work. I don't know if they're ever going to trust DeAndre Swift to be that guy because he just cannot stay healthy. So it feels like Jamal Williams re-signing makes sense. If they don't have him, they'll probably go for another running back that can form a committee with Swift. Devin Singletary has been useful enough in Buffalo. I don't know. if I, I doubt there's going to be teams that really like covet Devin Singletary at this point. Devin Singletary leaves. That obviously opens up the backfield to a dude like James Cook to get more touches. I also highly doubt they ever let James Cook be the guy. We've also never really seen Buffalo have the guy 
underneath Josh Allen. They just don't. They, they throw the ball at such a high rate that we're never going to get. If they went out and, and drafted a dude like Bijan Robinson, it's almost like forcing their offense to be something that they're not, um, which is why it's like we can you know, salivate over Buffalo having a featured workhorse. But at the end of the day, it's just it's not really what it is there. Um, so James Cook could be an awesome upside play that has games where he catches a lot of passes, gets 12 carries on the ground, maybe has a big play there. But I would be surprised if they don't let Devin Singletary go and then sign another back that they can just split the carries with James Cook for. I'm not overly excited about that. I am really intrigued. I think Damian Harris is probably the most intriguing player on this list for two reasons. One, because I think objectively he's an awesome running back. I would say pound for pound on this entire list, he might be the best runner um, just in terms of like what he brings to the ground game elusiveness and everything Damon Harris is an awesome runner I would love for like I would love for eh, I guess we have Tyler Algier but if I'm like an NFL team that needs a running back I would be pumped if we got Damian Harris on like a team friendly contract if that's like three three years you know fucking 14 million or something like that Damian Harris is a dude that I want on my team because he's a good NFL running back also opens the door for Ramondre Stevenson to be a fantasy god next year he is already awesome in fantasy but having Damian Harris out of the way and then you're just going to get a sprinkle of like, I don't know, Pierre Strong or Kevin Harris kind of backing you up. But they've already shown the propensity to give Ramondre Stevenson work on all three downs, which is not something you typically find out of New England running backs. We've already seen it with him, which means if Damian Harris is gone, which he very, very likely will be, Ramondre Stevenson's going to go crazy next year. He might be a first round pick. And similar to what I said for Tony Pollard, the top 24 pick, Ramondre Stevenson's a dude that I probably feel comfortable drafting in the top 15 to 20 picks. I don't know if I want to use my first round pick on him, to be honest with you, because there's always that like, it's the Patriots. You never know what the fuck they're going to do out there type energy. Um, So I might be a little bit hesitant, but Ramondre Stevenson, if you got him in dynasty, I got him in a lot of my dynasty leagues. Hell yeah. I'll toast to you on that. Yeah, so those are the only other like notable running backs, I would say. As we move to the wide receiver position, it's crazy because like if you go to Spotrack and then you filter by who's an unrestricted free agent this year, the way they list it, the way they sort it is by who has the most valuable contracts right now. And when you look at the wide receivers, it's so ugly. Like Randall Cobb's on a $27 million contract. He's the top free agent this year. Nelson Aguilar, $22 million. Marvin Jones, twelve and a half. Nikhil Harry, $10 million. DJ Chark, $10 million. So none of those guys, to me, are impactful whatsoever on the landscape of things. Like DJ Chark leaving obviously opens up the uh, door for Jameson Williams. Marvin Jones leaving, I guess, whatever. They're going to replace him with somebody. There you have Kirk and all these guys. What I think is interesting, what I would label as like the tier one wide receivers, more so in terms of just like impact and not necessarily talent because they're just a void of talent in the free agency market this year. Juju Smith-Schuster, Alan Lazard, and Jacoby Myers. So Juju's on that one-year deal. Do they resign him? He had a eh, year. I think people are still like chasing. He had the first two years. If he was going to be the guy again, like if he was going to be Juju again, he this was the fucking year to do it. You had Patrick Mahomes, and you had nobody else competing for targets. It was you and Travis Kelsey in an offense that throws for 350 yards a game, okay? Juju just ain't it anymore, okay? Whether he gets re-signed or not, I hope he doesn't because then that means Kadarius Tony will probably have a big role next year. And Juju Smith-Schuster will just be a slot wide receiver that is serviceable for another team. I would take him on the Falcons. I would like Juju Smith-Schuster on the Falcons. Drake London, Kyle Pitts, Juju. Nice complimentary piece. Clearly the third best player talent-wise in that offense as those other two progress into the primes of their career. Juju Smith-Schuster would open up KC, probably the most talented here because everybody else stinks. But you also look at KC, and the interesting part about this is Juju, Miko Hardman, and Justin Watson are all free agents, which again opens the door up for guys like Kadarius Toney or Sky Moore. And listen, I don't want to write off Sky Moore. I think if you had him in Dynasty, if you took him with an end of first round rookie pick, early second round, this is about as be- a best of an opening as you can possibly get with these other guys being free agents. Okay, so uh, with those three possibly gone, like who's going to catch passes again? Part two, the fucking sequel. Last year we thought it was bad. This year is even worse. All these other guys possibly leaving. Um, which means they'll probably attack wide receiver in the draft or maybe sign one of these guys, mediocre dudes, via free agency. Should be interesting, but Casey's got a lot of free agent guys 
at the wide receiver position. Alan Lazard, also a free agent, who's been like Aaron Rodgers' guy. Aaron Rodgers is probably out of the way. But you look at Alan Lazard, Randall Cobb was the top of the list. So that opens up things for Christian Watson, for Romeo Dobbs. I know all the hype on Romeo Dobbs completely flamed out after the injury, and Christian Watson kind of broke out. But if you're looking for a buy-low target, maybe Romeo Dobbs could be a guy who actually steps into a super, super high-level role in an offense that we don't know how it's going to be, realistically. But that's dynasty. You're gambling on players who are going to get a, a very large role, guys who have seen be good on the NFL field, guys that we know are going to uh, get a lot of snaps, and they're very young. And I think Romeo Dobbs kind of falls into that role. Third guy on this list is Jacoby Myers. Jacoby Myers has just been a target hog there in New England, and I think they likely let him leave, and he'll probably sign, again, like a three-year, 35, three-year, 40 million elsewhere. But what this will open up is New England to likely target a wide receiver early in the draft, whether that's Jordan Addison or Josh Downs, or Zay Flowers, who a lot of people like that fit right there, makes sense to me because all three guys are incredible route runners. All three guys can separate from any fucking defensive back that gets in their way. And it's kind of how Jacoby Myers was, but not as good. These three guys give Jacoby Myers plus explosiveness to that New England offense. They're all upgrades immediately to Jacoby Myers. And if any of those guys are in that role, that gets exciting because the volume has been so high. Uh, outside of those guys, I mean, you're really looking at those shitty KC receivers, Paris Campbell, Darius Slayton, kind of big year. I kind of hope they resign him. I like that DJ to Darius Slayton connection there. DJ Chark, Nelson Aguilar, and Marvin Jones. Like, nothing really matters there. Moving on to tight end and the final position here. Two guys at the top of the list. We have Evan Ingram, who finished at the tight end five this year in fantasy. Dalton Schultz, tight end 10 in fantasy. I think the Jaguars would do themselves a favor keeping Evan Ingram. He, like, bounced back in a major way and became one of Trevor Lawrence's favorite targets. Why fuck that up? Why fuck it up? Although... Evan Ingram did tweet out 11 hours ago from when I'm making this video. I'm making this video on Wednesday. He did tweet out, I love New York. He sounds like me anytime it's fucking above 45 degrees out here, you know? Maybe he just had a wild ass night. That's typically like the first thing I want to tweet when I wake up in the morning after a good night out. So maybe he's just enjoying his offseason and he's just been balling out here in, in the city. Or maybe he sees where the Giants offense is going and maybe he wants bike in. I think the Jaguars should resign, okay? I think they should probably bring him back. I don't know. I don't know what they do, but they're sinking a lot of money into this offense. Run it back. Run it. Schultz statistically has been phenomenal the last two years. He did not end this season on a good note. I saw someone uh, someone tweeted out something funny. At Fantasy Freezer said, Dalton Schultz is going to sign a nice contract this offseason and go full Austin Hooper on some unsuspecting team. Uh, Schultz will be a target for, I've seen like him linked with the Chargers, him linked with the Dolphins maybe. He's a good player. Uh, I think he will be... If he could land with a good quarterback in a similar situation as the Dallas Cowboys, I think he will be one of the more underrated fantasy tight ends for next year that you could probably draft at like tight end 8, 9, 10, 11, and you'll probably get that return on him. Good pass catcher. We've now seen him have success at the NFL level for multiple years in a row, but his time in Dallas has probably come to an end. Uh, the contract that he's going to command is probably going to be a little bit too rich for them. So Don Schultz, I think, is a, a nice little a nice little buy here. The other guys that I'm like semi intrigued by, I guess, Irv Smith, obviously with, uh, he's an unrestricted free agent. They brought in Hawkinson to Minnesota. So his career there is finished. He's still just 24 years old. He was one of the more exciting guys coming to the league. Like a lot of people were excited about him. He very, he very well might end up being just like the next Jonu Smith where we're like, oh, young athleticism. Once he gets his chance, he's for sure going to go off. Could be the case, but Irv Smith is a dude I would target depending on your risk tolerance. No idea where he's going to land, but he will land elsewhere. He will get another chance to be the guy. Though with a lot of injuries this year, obviously, just could not overcome that. And another dude who's kind of similar profile, very athletic as well, but hidden behind uh, Darren Waller for the entirety of his rookie contract, Foster Moreau. Foster Moreau has been someone who uh, maybe this year he didn't go crazy, but neither the Raiders offense kind of stunk. Foster Moreau, I feel like is a really good buy low for Dynasty and an NFL team. Foster Moreau is very young, extremely athletic, hidden behind Darren Waller. He's a dude I would go out and probably target right now. And the last dude on this list, Mike Gesicki. Uh, don't care for him at all. Don't think he's a good NFL player, but I don't know. Maybe some team takes a chance on him and maybe it opens it up for Hunter Long. I think the Dolphins will probably do themselves a favor by signing a free agent, uh, tight end, Ingram, Schultz, whoever, you know, Irv fucking Smith, Foster Moreau, all any of the five guys I just named before him. Mike Isicki is an unrestricted free agent, but nobody gives a fuck. And by this point, y'all probably don't give a fuck about what I'm saying anymore. Uh, so that will wrap up this video. Free agents upcoming March 
don't remember what date it was, 15th maybe. Uh, so that'll be fun. But obviously after teams start signing players, we will do like a recap video and how it impacts everything fantasy football related. If you enjoyed the video, go hit the button that looks like this underneath it. Subscribe to the channel if you are new and let me know what kind of dynasty content you want to see going forward monday's video will be a rookie mock draft two rounds with mr ray g unfortunately we couldn't get his partner in crime jordan because he has uh booked up he, he just cannot operate as a human on fridays because he is guaranteed that day for his girlfriend which is some bullshit jordan if you watch this i'm calling you out um priorities brother fucking priorities rookie mock drafts take priority over everything at this time of the year also i saw a comment that said told me to stop banging on the table i apologize i can't like just, there won't be a video if i can't do this with my fucking hands all right all right i gotta get leave love you